all right good morning everyone hope we're good all right so this morning i just want to share with you some of the thoughts on the topic of christ being our reality i hope the sound is good because i don't have uh, i don't have my headsets i don't know where they are right now and i can't find them and we don't have power so anyway We'll try to see what we can do with what we have. I want us to talk about Christ being our reality because this is the most fascinating truth that the Bible gives us. Okay, if we read, um, if we go back and read the Bible, the centrality of all Scripture, even when Jesus was, after being crucified, his disciples are uh, uh, disappointed with the whole crucifixion event. He's, he appears to his disciples on the road to Emmaus, and he begins to expound to them the truths that are in the Bible. Now, he begins explaining the reality of who he is from, from Moses and the prophets. Jesus begins to, to, to center everything in the event of him dying on the cross of Calvary. So today I just want to talk about him being reality, the ontology. Ontology is a study branch of philosophy where it talks about existence, right? But existence and reality is being studied by so many people, but when you come to the real concept of existence, we find the one subject that is fascinating. And I know David is watching this, and I know he will be so happy to contribute. I just want to go through some of the verses that are in the Bible that shows us that Jesus is reality. This is the, the centrality of all scripture. If you read the Bible without seeing that picture, it will be so hard because you will not be understanding what the Bible says. Okay, so let's go on. Revelation chapter, chapter 22 verse 13 begins to tell us from the scripture that Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the ending. I am the first and the last. The Alpha and the Omega, which is the alphabet itself of existence and life is Him. It is Jesus who is the centrality of our existence, right? So in Revelation, Jesus, this is the end book. So even in the, in the New Testament, Jesus Christ has been pictured as the center of all reality. So God, even God, for him to be God, he needs the reality of Jesus Christ. The only true picture that we've been given to, of God to us, the only picture that God has given of himself, it is Jesus. So if we sideline Jesus in whatever activity that we engage in, we end up losing it and we end up missing the whole picture of our reality. Okay, because we're so caught up in our emotional lives, our experiences, our realities. Now there's our truth, right? I've just heard uh, Ofer Winfrey, uh, Winfrey, she was talking about how your truth is what matters. But there is nothing like your truth when it comes to the scriptures. There's only one truth, and that is the truth himself. And the truth is a person, the truth is Jesus. Okay, so I just, I just want us to orient our minds into seeing how Jesus is our reality. So I'm going to read to you some of the verses that I have down here so that we see how Jesus Christ is our reality and how this is comforting to us. In uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 17, Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, verse 17, it says, it says, and he, this is Jesus, he is before all things and by him all things consist. So if something is before, that means that the rest of the things come secondary. So this is Paul trying to tell us the preeminency, the position of Jesus when it comes to things. He's before all things, and all things consist in him. If we look at even when he comes the second time, what happens to the elements of, of, of life and existence? The things that we think are real, they begin to melt. And only those that are in Christ Jesus are translated into heaven. And only those that have died in him are resurrected from the grave. The rest melts before him. So the only reality that matters to God himself is Jesus Christ. Outside of Jesus Christ, there is no reality. You live your life outside of him, you are not actually living. 
it's better off you do not even exist if we do not live a life in him and for god to be just before the universe he needs the reality of his fellow he's called his fellow in the bible and his fellow meaning that the one that who is equal to him and that is the reality of jesus christ himself so if we begin to read the scripture aright and begin to see the scripture for what it says to us it gives us a testimony of the one man only who matters and that is jesus the reality of of us as human beings even the bible says something about revenge right we like to revenge just recently i had an incident where i felt the the compulsion of wanting to revenge because somebody did something to me but what does the bible say about revenge jesus says revenge belongs unto who unto me right if if you belong to Jesus Christ, you are the least. So if anything least has been done unto you, it has also been done unto Jesus. So we allow him to be God in our lives, to take the position of, of, of us, us accepting him as God and accepting him to carry out the revenge for us. We've not been given the ability to deal with each other. We've been given the ability to love each other, to to, to, to share in into the glory that God uh, shows us. In Colossians chapter 3, I'm still in the book of Colossians. Let's look at the reality of life itself. Colossians chapter 3, I'm going to read verse 1 up to 4. Chapter 3, verse 1 up to 4, it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. So if we are risen with Christ, we should seek those things that are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. So it begins to lift us up from looking at everything around us, looking at the people around us, the earthlings around us. But it says now your affections, in verse 2 it says, set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. So my affections, my emotional spectrum, my desires should be set on things that are above and not on things on the earth. So if I think the experiences in my life are so real, excluding Jesus Christ, then I start living a false reality, right? So things that the Bible continues, it says this in verse 4, it says, when Christ, who is your life, when Christ, who is your life, Sorry, I skipped verse, verse 3. Verse 3 says, Ye are dead, and your life is hid with God in. Your life is hid with Christ in God. So what is our reality, you and me? The Bible says you are dead. Now that you're living a born-again uh, resurrection type of life, you should not consider yourself, you should not consider this life that you live in as, as your own. You are dead. Your life is hid in somebody else. And it is hid so deep that even the muscle, the, the corruption of this world cannot get it. How hid is our life? It is hid with Christ in God. That is how far God has hidden our life. And this four says, when Christ who is your life, your life is a person. And it is a person that stands before God, who sits at the right hand before God, and that is Jesus. That is your life, right? It says, when Christ who is your life shall appear, then shall ye also appear in, shall ye appear with him in glory. So should we live our lives apart from Christ? Then we are dedicated to the fires. Everything else that is outside the realm of Christ is dedicated to hellfire. My life as, as Mike, Every other relationship that I go through, whether it be intimate relationship, friend zone relationship, or churchmate relationship, workmate relationship, is only going to have significance in the picture of my substitute, who is Jesus Christ. Anything else outside Jesus Christ, guys, does not matter. Anything else that we have outside him does not matter. So we should always ask ourselves, the reality of our existence, is it in Christ or outside of Christ? And by the way, when it says in Christ, it means in that individual who is the God-chosen individual for to be the vehicle of our salvation, to be the captain of our salvation. Jesus Christ is our reality. I'll be, I'll be preaching, I think, on a, on a Saturday evening at DK. 
And these are some of the things that we're going to touch, but I'm going to talk more on, on, on the gospel and what is power and all this. But today I just wanted, because I was fascinated going through um, some of the experiences that God is bringing me into, is that he begins to tell me my realities right now, my, 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 my communities, my church community, my friendships and all these. These things are not going to matter if they're not hid in Christ Jesus. And I'm hoping that that reality will become so deep to us that the only person that we will give praise to is one man, and that is Jesus, not our pastors. If we get caught up in our, in our titles as a pastor, doctor, this and that, and we think these are what we, we have as our realities, we end up missing the picture of our existence because these are positions positions that can be lost, and positions that are not so real. You may be a doctor, a wonderful doctor, a wonderful pastor, but if that reality of you being a pastor is outside Jesus, you have missed the point. You are digging your own grave. And Jesus tells us that, listen, Jesus is the only reality that stands before God and the universe. And I'm not talking about the earth itself. I'm talking about the entire universe. The unfallen worlds, the, 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 the angels in heaven find their existence in that one man who is Christ. They find their adulation in him. He is the centrality of existence. Everything consists, as we read from the Bible, it consists in him, holds together in him. Even the devil knows that this is true. Therefore, his main aim in this world is to drive us away from the life that Jesus Christ offers us so that we could start focusing on another on another gospel on another jesus altogether because the world has been fed another jesus even in christianity there's another picture of jesus than the picture that the bible gives us to be our our our, our example in our life but our infinite example as we're given from the scripture so I, I, I pray that this will be an encouragement to somebody out there. I'm just studying these things out. I'm still studying them out. But Jesus has offered us so much. God has emptied heaven in that one gift who we call Jesus. Heaven has been emptied in that one gift called Jesus. And if we center our affections, our desires on him, he's called the desires of all nation for a reason. Every person every desire must center upon him and when we understand things that way it'll be very easy when we're going through trials to accept the trials to know that before this trial came to you before it affected you it has affected the one who is infinite and he feels the pain at, a, at an infinite level so the pain that you're going through it might be physical pain psychological pain whatever a pain that you may be going through, Jesus Christ feels it at an infinite level if you are his child. So he has ordained things like pain and suffering to be his workmanship in working out a Christian, a Christ-like character in us. And we like to avoid everything else. We like to avoid, we are an avoidant generation, right? We like to avoid pain and all this, to cushion all the pain so that we're comfortable. We like the comfort. But God has ordained that most of the things that are around us that we find to be so much inconveniencing are ordained to work out something in our lives. And if we're not avoidant, if we are patient, because the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter, chapter 14, verse 12, it says, here is the patience of the saints. When is that patience going to be developed? There is no development of patience without trial, without suffering, without you going through uh, the pains that are around us. You're only going to be patient if you go through these things. But if we always want to shortcut things and work out things and do these, bribe somebody, do these and all that, we are doing that at the peril of our own souls. We will end up losing our eternity, which has been purchased at the high price of an infinite God dying for us. We we'll end up losing that because we are a pain avoidant generation. The reality, brothers and sisters, of having a God come down from heaven and him identifying himself with the most miserable creatures, that is you and me. 
I, I know right now these are things that people don't want to hear, that we are the most miserable creatures around and God has identified himself with us. We like to hear that we are something and all this and all that. When God, the picture that the Bible gives us is a very different picture. The Bible says humanity is as vapor. We are as the flower of the field. We, we melt away. We are nothing. All the nations are like a drop in a bucket. That's the diagnosis of who we are as human beings. And God shows us our nothingness, not just to depress us, to cause a lot of fear and anxiety, but he shows us our nothingness so that we can find our everythingness in that one person who is our substitute and surety, Jesus Christ himself. He shows us, and we don't want to know this reality about us. We want to cover up who we really are. And what we see in society today is a picture of what's really going on at the spiritual level. In society today, we have a lot of fake people, or uh, ladies, if you know what I'm talking about, fake wigs, fake this and all. Everything seems to be fake. And that is a picture of what's going on in our spiritual lives as well. The reality of us being fake. We don't want to be naked as we are before God. Everybody else is okay. Even on Facebook, people live fake lives. Uh, everybody else on Facebook is rich and they're doing so well. They're doing this and that. Nobody really wants to be real and true. And because we avoid being who we are, I am this. The poverty that we have of, of spirit is actually a blessing. That is a gateway into God. But we want to show that we are rich and increase with goods and in need of nothing, we are okay. We just waiting to go to heaven. God says, if we, if he was to reveal to us who we really are, the horrors that we, we have so for so long covered in our walk, so-called Christian walk, will be terrified and we will not even want to stand it. God has offered us one remedy in one man, and that is Jesus. And he says, if I be lifted up, I will do what? I will draw all men unto me. We have a lot of people lifting up a lot of things today. We lift up our church programs. We lift up our, 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 our expo, health expos. We lift up a lot of things that we lift up. Our preachers. Oh, we have this preacher that is coming. We have their pictures out there. And that's all we do. We lift up humanity. And we don't lift up Jesus. We don't have much more time with Jesus. We don't spend much more time with Jesus. We don't spend much more time with him who is the author and finisher of our faith, who is the profession of our faith, who is the only one that knows us from inside out, the only one that represents us before the Father. We don't want to lift him up. We want to lift up ourselves. We want to lift up our ministries. We lift up everything else but not Jesus. And we are blind to seeing that this is the onslaught from the enemy. We, the devil wants us to be so caught up in our experiences, in our emotions, in our psychological derangements, so that we, at the end of the day, we, we are not saved. We're not saved. So that they, at the end of the day, we don't realize the reality of the time in which we live in. This is the reality of the day. The day of atonement. When Jesus Christ ministers in the most holy place, this is the reality that we are living in. And he will get us so, the devil will get us so caught up in a lot of things. A lot of things, our careers, our marriages, our this and that, even our church activity. And we end up losing the reality of our salvation, who is Jesus. Salvation is a person. Salvation is a, a being that was given to us. Salvation is Jesus Christ himself. And because we avoid him, his whole life, Jesus Christ lived a lonely life. And it was heaven being around him, but it was very lonely. And I believe he has continued being lonely. He's continued being lonely because we don't want to spend time with him. We wake up, we run out uh, outside, we, we go into doing our things, and we don't want to spend time with Jesus. And because he is, 
is described in the Bible as the rock of offense to the church of God. Jesus Christ is an offense to us. <laughs> and his foolishness to those that don't believe in him, to the atheists, these people that don't believe in him, it's foolishness. Like, Jesus? No. <sighs> so, the reality of who Christ is to us, these things that I'm saying to you, are only going to make sense if you do not think yourself so highly. If you only uplift him, if you think about him more, if you spend time with Jesus, the weightiness of the reality of the things that I'm saying to you right now will only make sense to us if we, if we don't think of ourselves so highly. But if we're so propped up with our narcissism, we're so thinking we're something when we're nothing, this is going to sound like blah, 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 and then that's it. You're not going to get what I'm saying. But the reality of Christ in our lives, the reality of Jesus Christ in our lives should be so real that everything that we do is wrapped up with him. The way we think is wrapped up with him. I believe Jesus Christ is about to come. And there's no time, better time for us to talk about him and to be excited to have the butterflies in our stomachs about him than now. <laughs> And, and this is the time when everybody else is like asleep, including myself. Spiritually, we're asleep. The question that comes to each and every person is, how tight are you with Jesus? How real is he to you? Is Jesus just another being that died uh, 2,000 years ago on the cross? Or is, this, is he... Um, the person you rush to when you're in trouble and then he gives you everything that you want and then you're okay, you're fine. And then you go back to your own life. Oh, he's Jesus' reality to you. Is he so real that everything that I do, my thoughts are caught up in him? Does he have the most fondest thoughts in my mind? Is he the most wonderful being when I think about him and when I spend time with him I feel so blessed or is Jesus somebody else that we just add to our done our addendum in our lives like hey he's, he's just right there we can talk about everything else that we do but let's talk about him at the end the question that I have is is, is Jesus Christ reality to you and me is this so real or we have chosen another master altogether have we become the masters of our own destiny? As the motivational speakers always tell you to be the masters of your own destiny. You're not in charge of life. You don't even know what's going to happen in the next five minutes. How are you the master of your own destiny? Jesus Christ is in charge of reality. He says, I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the ending, the end. He, you don't know what's going to happen in reality. Jesus Christ lives outside our time zone and he knows the end from the beginning. How are we in charge of our own destiny? How are we in charge of our own destiny? We need to change our mindsets of how we think. Jesus Christ is in charge of our own destiny. We are not. We're not in charge. Everything else is built upon him. He is the rock he is the stone that the builders rejected. And believe me, you today, even the churches are rejecting Jesus. They want to build. They're building, but they're rejecting Jesus. The only thing that is going to make us stand is being rejected. It is a shame for us to reject the only being that matters in the whole universe. Looking at what heaven has invested on us as human beings, it is a shame that we should reject the only person that really matters in this world. I'm, I'm not talking about a church. I'm talking about you as an individual. What's your connection with Jesus? Does it even exist or it does not exist? Do you live your life and then, or is it a double standard life? Is Jesus really reality to you? Or do you have your own reality? I'm going to read, Jesus is our reality also in our, in our freedom. For us to be free, indeed, 
it is the son that sets us free indeed. John 8 tells us that. But for me to have the freedom in my life, I need him who is the ultimate picture of freedom, and that is Jesus. We're not free unless we have the son. He that has the son has eternal life. So if we do not understand the reality of our king, our Lord, the Lordship of Jesus Christ in our lives, for him to be Lord, Lord is boss of our lives. If we do not understand the reality, we will have, we'll be our own bosses and we'll be propped up and we'll be drunk on our own wine of Babylon, of confusion. Our lives will be so confused. We'll be psychologically deranged. So I'm hoping that these studies, um, I'm going to make them into series. This is just like an introduction into the reality of who Jesus Christ is. I'm hoping that these studies, as we begin to talk about them, because we don't have so many platforms to talk about these things. I'll talk, I'll talk about them when I'm at home like this. Um, I'm going to leave. So I can, I can talk about a lot of things when I'm free and I don't have a lot of things to do. But I'm hoping that we'll be rooted and grounded in the principle of who Christ is. And when we begin to see the reality of who Jesus Christ is from the scriptures, the testimony of him from the scriptures, we'll begin to deny every other reality that is not real. Because there is a lot of gospel going out there that is, that is another gospel, which is not another, but a pervasion of the gospel. There's another spirit, which is not the Holy Spirit, but a pervasion of the Holy Spirit. I mean, there's another crust which is not another, but a counterfeit of Christ being preached out there. And a lot of people in the Christian dome have missed the point of Christianity. Christianity is a faith. It's a trust. It's a belief in that one individual who is called Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. And this is the reality that we need to have. Jesus Christ is our life. In James chapter 4, the question is asked, what is your life? That's in James chapter 4 verse 14. It says, what is your life? It is even has vapor. My life is vapor <laughs> compared to the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is immortal, is eternal, and he has adopted human nature in himself. And he tied himself to us by a tie that can never be broken. And he is extending his hand of mercy and compassion to us. The question is, are we receiving his hand? He's been given to us as a gift. The most choicest, the chiefest among 10,000 has been given to us as a gift. And this is the reality of who Christ is in our lives. So I pray that we think about these things and who Jesus Christ is to us. In of ourselves as human beings, we have what is called physical existence. And when this physical existence, this, this, this physical existence goes, I go. I do not exist anymore because this physical existence has gone. But here is a, a substitute of my physical existence, who is Jesus Christ. He comes on the picture of reality, and then he says, I am your reality. Every experience that you're going to go through, even in, even in, the, in the Bible, the children of Israel, I'm going on a little bit longer than I expected, but even in the Bible, the children of Israel, Jesus says when they were afflicted, because they were his children, his chosen people, when they were afflicted, he was also afflicted. He's touched with the infirmities that we have as human beings. And then it says in Hebrews, it says, we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with our infirmities. It behooved him to become like his brethren, you and me, his brothers and sisters. It behooved him so that he can succor those that come unto him, so that he can uphold them that are weak that come unto him. That is the reality of who Christ is to us. He is the captain of our salvation. Salvation is in one person, 
And it's, it's been given to us and we need to have faith in that one person. We need to build around Jesus. Anything else that is built outside of him is dedicated to the fires, hellfire. Anything else that is not in Christ Jesus is accursed, set out to be accursed. Should you find your life to be outside Jesus today? Are you living your life? Or are you living the life of Jesus? Two things. My life is vapor. Jesus Christ's life is not vapor. It is substance. It holds us together. The heights of how deep he's come to rescue you and me. If you really want to know how deeply you have fallen as a human being. Because we, we, we mask ourselves. We don't know how sinful we are. We think sin is just composed in our doings. If I do this, then I'm sinful. If, if, if I do this, then, then I've sinned. But we don't know that even the commandment go has deeper as even condemning our nature as human beings. If we know how deep the chain has been lowered to rescue you and me, then we'll know the depth of our fall. Then we know how... So the question is how deep really is the chain that has been lowered to rescue us from the pit that we have fallen into? How deep is it? It is as deep as God. And how deep is God? Infinitely deep. God, Jesus is God. He's Jehovah himself. That's what Yeshua means. It means, it means, it means Jehovah who is salvation. So the one who is salvation is the chain that has been lowered down to rescue humanity. And how deep did we fall? <laughs> how deep was the price paid for the fall? 